Howdy, howdy, everyone. Damon, Damon, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop pretending like you have a phonia or are imitating cutie Moika. <laughs> this is just pathetic, man. Come on, we're going. Speaking of pathetic men, we're the bittersweet gamers. You talked for that? <laughs> Okay, so we're not penalized for wrong decisions or anything, so we ought to just go somewhere and do something. I like the sound of that. Oh look, we're at Shoko's photo. How about we do that first? An ice pick stabbed into Shoko's photograph. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> time remaining, not changing in the middle of talking. That means we can still provide commentary. <laughs> uh, pull out? what I want to do. We'll do it! Don't wait for me! Right. No one would want to see their mother like this. You saw how it cost time, right? Uh-huh. Aha! Uh -huh. It keeps going. What is this? If we make the speaker higher than the cage, the lightning will strike it! Hey, that makes sense. Something happened over there. Well, that was, that was easy. <laughs> okay, now there's two different metal lot number twos. Oh. The pillar became a lightning rod. Is, is which one of these we choose to solve, does that actually sort of determine our route? Probably, because I would think that these would be the big turning points, you know? Maybe. It looks like we can get to the birdcage now. Our next step must be to remove it. Man, I want to wear baskets. Date. We got a timey. A wari? A timey? Yeah, we read about them off screen in the tips section. Time induction matter in encephalon. Oh, is that it? <laughs> you can think of it as an item that affects the flow of time. Uh, that is what the note said. Using this, you can slow down or speed up time insomnia. I think it just made it so that you could change the uh, amount of time that an action would take. Hmm. So if there's an action that ends up looking like it's going to take a large amount of time... We can reduce it with the timing. But you can only carry three of them, so you, there's no point in hoarding them. Right, right. Is this another function pewter added? Correct. Sounds like a dream. <laughs> well, it is a dream. And because it is a dream, extraordinary things such as this are possible. Got it. Guess I'll try to use them where I can. The time taken to perform an action, yeah. Remove it or blow it away, huh? I think removing it might be the safer option. Well, it doesn't really matter what we do. <laughs> Just go do something. An enormous birdcage. Until we get a sense for how to handle these, uh -huh. we should just kind of proceed like that. Well, it looks to me like both of those are going to be pointless. Does this mean that we shouldn't actually investigate things? It implied that doing the wrong thing... Well, I guess it won't penalize doing the it wrong... will just consume time. Yeah, doing the wrong thing will just mean 30 seconds is gone, and I imagine both of these don't work. We're not going to be able to lift it. Doesn't that make sense? Well, that does make sense. This is a dream, however, so I'm not sure how much sense needs to apply, but I agree with you. I don't think that's the correct one. If lifting would work, then lifting by itself would just deal with the second lot at the end. Yeah. But I bet none of these are useful. Okay, so we should back out and look at the other stuff. Can you? Don't you have to select something? Oh, I... you can back out. <laughs> Let's investigate this control room. The control room of the merry-go-round lifted out of the ground. Right. What I'm curious about is there's a 1-3 on one and a 1-4 on the other. Well, if you look at the timey, it says one half. So what does that mean? I don't know, but we just need to keep it in mind. I would open the door, don't you think? Maybe that's what we get because it's in the same format as the timey if that's the correct option. Maybe. Or maybe we just get that whatever option it is. Maybe. Anyway, I'm open it. What is your plan once I am inside? See what's in there? It is a control room. Duh! Oh, we can do something in there. <laughs> Stop questioning me in every way. That's what BSG does. I do not think it will be that easy. Well, neither do we, but that's... But you should still <laughs> look in there to find out what you find. Just try it. 
Time is limited. Quit complaining. Uh. Um. I didn't expect to see this inside. I mean, this is clearly where we needed to go, huh? <laughs> I do not see an exit either. But there's something suspicious here. Yes, yeah, the everything. Oh yeah, and there are there are hidden items that will fill in our album, but I don't think we should worry about those at all. I agree. It's not that I'm not interested, but we can find them off screen or something. Yeah. If if I see one, I'll grab it, but Huh. I see two bird cages. Looks like there's something inside them. Take a look. Wondering if there's any significance to the bird cage outside of what's apparent. Well, what's apparent is pretty apparent, so. Yeah, what's apparent is kind of at the core of this. What was apparent, perhaps. Yeah. I should be punished for that. That was in terrible taste. It's okay. I kind of set you up for it. I'm such an enabler. <laughs> Left bird cage. Is that the one you A bird want? Cage. I guess it was. There are ripped pieces of paper inside. Why don't you use the timey, use the one-fourth timey on tackle? Because you know that you want to tackle, right? I do. I really do. All right. How's this? Doria! It's heavy. <laughs> but I feel better because we got to hit it. I do too. Hitting things a is a great cage. way to relieve stress, especially when it doesn't destroy them or cause anybody any damage or inconvenience. <laughs> If it hurts, I, but I don't care. <laughs> there are ripped pieces of paper inside. Oh, and we did still receive the timey for doing that action. Hmm. Okay, okay. Why don't you peek inside, don't Should you I think? Should I use the timey? No, because it's only ten seconds. All right, peeking inside. Let's see. What is it? It looks like a picture of something. Right, there's Mizuki in it. And, and there's her parents, it looks like. And she seems younger. Well, because her parents are together. And there's the panda right outside. So this is a picture of them at the park when she was younger. So that means that this is a place that has good memories for her from a time when she had good memories. Which is to say, when her mother and father were still together and still, as far as she could see, would get along. However, since then, her life... As shattered. Mm. Right? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Picture. Well, why don't we go ahead and try to lift it? Use the half. No, hold on. Use the thirty second timey on lift. Oh, that's how that works. See, I got got we, we gotta do our math stuff, and we have to use a timey because we're gonna get another one anyway. Well, I leave the math to you. I'll I'll stick with the bad jokes. Alright, leave it to me. I do like how this works so far. Me too. It's it's surprisingly robust. I also don't feel that pressured, like I normally would be. Well, because time only passes at certain times, and it's more like a resource that gets used up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is heavier than it looks. I have a, I have a question. <laughs> After you picked it up and threw it aside, why did you go, it is heavier than it looks, and then make a noise as if you were able to move it aside? See, this is why when you're dubbing something, you have to actually look and see what you're dubbing so you know how much time needs to pass. I'm just saying. Are, are you done? <laughs> you're done. That was it? That was one of them. Remove the cage. Now we're on the, this path instead of the other one with all the balloons. <sighs> Nothing happened. All I did was move the cage. Yeah, Dante! Right, I knew about this according to the tips. So if you don't like what happens, you can retry. And, like, you've got three retries. Uh -huh. Going back one lot costs one retry. Going back two lots costs, costs two, two retries. retries. Yes, exactly. There are torn Agent pieces Dante, of paper. You've got five minutes. Okay, cool. Yes, thank you! Um, I feel like the answer is obvious. Like, on the one hand, I want to actually be funny, but these kind of feel like they'll have a bad result. I mean, we don't get a timey, a timey for roll up and toss, but it might be funny. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think we should 
try and pick some amusing things or, you know, just try and be smart about this whole thing. Obviously, we will not wait for your decision. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think, Billy? On the one hand, I do want to roll up a toss, but piece together does seem like obviously what you should do, right? Yeah. Since it's the first one, I imagine that the obvious answer should be really obvious because it's the first one. That makes sense. And it, I just feel like there's going to be some negative connotations to scattering it further. Maybe there will be, maybe there won't be. Well, go ahead and use the half tiny. Leave it to me. I enjoy puzzles like this. Well, you call it a puzzle, but come on. It's not exactly a jigsaw. Done. But... <gasps> it just feels like we're missing something if we don't do silly things. Hmm. You were able to get out? And the cage is gone, but now there's a barricade. So the photo was the key. I remember it clearly. One day, I came home to find that photo torn up in the trash can. When I asked Mizuki about it, she started to cry. I don't know why she tore up that photo, but whatever her reason, it seems like she regrets it. That seems pretty obvious. Since we repaired the photo in Somnium, the birdcage... Mizuki must be having a hard time. Yeah, her family life is garbage and she's 12! And she saw her mother die! Or dead, or something. But the cage is gone. We can get to Mizuki now. Do you not see the horses spinning at hurricane speeds? Who cares? <laughs> you can do it if you try a little. <laughs> Easy for you to say. She's doing all the work. Yeah, and? She's literally doing all the heavy lifting. No, you can't. All right, fine. We have to stop the spinning. I suspect I might know what we need to do on account of the panda's head is spinning. We had to take a second to figure out how to do this. What is the point of trying to provide entertainment by only doing the right thing and avoiding the silly things? <laughs> so we have worked out how we are going to proceed. We are going to play around a what little bit. This? The thing is, because this directly impacts our success or failure, we felt it was kind of important to consider. Especially when it's like willfully doing something that wastes the only resource that we have. It'd be one thing if we made a mistake and suffer the consequences of the mistake, mm -hmm. but going through some of these funny things is willfully making a mistake and losing the resource that you have. So we worked out how we're going to do it, and we're going to try to do it this way. Everyone and following that? Agent Date, you've got four minutes. Yeah, 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 whatever. The parasol is spinning. We got to mess with the spinning parasol. <laughs> Why? Because it's fun. Spin more! Like this? <laughs> oh god! Detaches and flies off. The merry-go-round is... Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> that looked bad. Yeah, that wasn't good. Huh, that might actually help us. This might actually be the way we're supposed to go. <laughs> 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 I love the squirm. Seeing something spinning like this makes me want to go for a run. <laughs> uh, this really works, especially next to the squirming horses that are skewered. You have the instincts of a hamster. Well, she's about the size of a hamster in the real world, so... The panda head is spinning. I mean, we thought we were going to have to mess with this. Eh, it might be the parasol, though. Spin more! Bring it on. <laughs> Rah! Force! Wait, stop. The centrifugal force is gonna tear it apart. <laughs> I see. Spinning it makes it go faster. How do we slow it down? Duh. Ted, duh. This appears to be the microphone for the speaker. Listen up, miscreant. I know you're hiding in there. In the dream? Throw down your weapon and come out with your hands up. She is making fun of Date and that's it. <laughs> Nothing happened. Your parents would be very disappointed <laughs> in you. Shame on you and your family. You can fix this. 
You have so much to live for. She is just making fun of Dante. Are you trying to talk down a culprit or a jumper? You can't give up hope now. You're having fun, aren't you? <laughs> Shout as loud as possible. No, my ears. Stop it. I can feel my ears bleeding. Stop it already. The entrance gate. It must be done. Doria! Leave it to me. The gate hurts more than I do. Uh huh, sure. Doubt it. We'll need more than a little force to open this. This gate is as solid as my virtue. You, Damon, no, it's it's not worth it. Okay. I don't know how solid your virtue is. Dante? Keep in mind, Iba was the one twerking on Bonesy. <laughs> An enormous birdcage. I'm a lifted! If I touch it now, I will be electrocuted. Lift it! Iba, don't you know? It's better to regret doing something than not doing it. <laughs> Dante gets us. I would regret it either way. I am not doing it. This? Is there not a smarter way? Can't think of one. You have quite the muscle brain, don't you? Yeah, but it's a strong muscle. <laughs> I suppose I have no choice. <laughs> See, there you go. Wow. <laughs> I really didn't think this would work. <laughs> Dante is a genius. The pillar became a lightning rod. Maybe you should have pulled the pick out. Yeah, maybe you should have. What? Wait. Did you know this whole time? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Yeah. Take that memory of childhood. It came back. Do you really think we can heal Mizuki like this? You're the one who told her to kick it. I am following your <laughs> instructions. I thought it would relieve some stress. Yeah, wasn't I talking about that earlier? You should consider what these pieces could mean. Ah, forget that. Let's just beat them up some more. What they mean, huh? Roll them up. Yeah! And toss them away. Oh. <laughs> yes! It was totally worth it! <laughs> hey, handle them a little more carefully. And toss them away. Ow. Yes! <laughs> this feels so good! It's just like elementary school! Throwing wads of paper at girls! The hell is wrong with you? Alright, enough joking around for Agent now. Agent Dante, you've got four minutes. Yeah, I'm getting to it. The parasol is spinning. Stop! Like this. I wonder if either the panda or the parasol will work, or if it has to be one specific one. I guess we'll find out. Scintillating commentary! I didn't think it would be that easy. Yeah, but it really was. Well, what if she lets go and it starts spinning again? Seems as though it worked. All right, so Mizuki... Let's go. We have to save Mizuki. ...is stuck there, hiding, locked in, just like she was when we found her in the park in the real world. Make sense? Affirmative. Her heart's still locked in the place of its trauma, kind of? I hadn't really thought of it before now, but I guess the reason we didn't have a time limit before a go -round horse. is because Date can't be absorbed into his own consciousness. <laughs> as far as we know. Yeah, he was just kind of naturally doing it in his sleep, in his own brain. He wasn't thinking with another person. Or maybe he was thinking with Iba? Well, the time limit has to do with an actual time limit. But if you're you, you can't feel the negative consequences of exploring your own mind. 
Enough about that, Damon. You've been a naughty, naughty equine. It's time for a spanking! You understand that you just said you're going to spank me, Damon. I, I, well, I can't back out now. If you touch me, you'll die. <laughs> you punched it? <laughs> I said spank it! Listen to what I say! I said spank, not slay! Nothing is happening. It's okay. I didn't expect anything to happen. Poor horse. <laughs> Iba, you apologize to that horse for punching it in the butt. Excuse me, but do you happen to know the culprit? I don't think it's going to go the way that you or Iba thinks it's going to here. <laughs> oh, really? What does mean exactly? I'm afraid I don't understand horse. <laughs> Damon, you don't understand horse? You do? Nay. Uh, I... <laughs> I have been owned, okay? <laughs> I see. Did you learn something? <laughs> I did, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well? This horse cannot speak English. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. It's Mizuki. Yeah, this is the part that seems important. Okay, slapping her must surely be highly amusing, but... We should not do that. I'll have her slap in her knee when I tell a bad joke to make her laugh. What are you talking laugh. about? I don't know. I just want to make her laugh. I will imitate you, Date. Please don't. Oh, little mini light bulb needs a change. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, good boy. Mini, mini, mini. <laughs> what the? What? What is she even talking about? I guess, like, the light bulb in the fridge, maybe? Okay, cutie little mini light bulb. I'll turn you on. Yes, I will. <laughs> what? Oh, you turned on. Good job, mini light bulb. Yay! I, I don't think that's imitating Date at all. I think it's more irritating Date. Mini, mini, mini. <laughs> Well, Damon, the next time our light bulb in the fridge needs changing... Don't you dare! <laughs> mini, mini, mini. Mini, 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 mini. I never said that before. See? <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> no reaction. Because it doesn't make any sense. I thought it made perfect sense. What does that say? There, there, Mizuki. It's gonna be okay. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. Mizuki. <laughs> yeah. She needed to breathe. Can't just hide. Refusing to face that grief forever. So. It's Evil Eye! Excuse me? Why not? I was got a representation in this world. Why not the Evil Eye? Well, what, what I take that to be is Mizuki's memory of what she saw. Which is a person. I know, maybe I'm just clinging too tightly to my theory. The one where I thought the killer was Dante's actual eye that's coming out and possessing people, making people die and everything, you know? I, I think you're actually right that this is just a representation of... of what she remembers seeing or something like that. Like this a, is kind of like the Dongon Golem. Yeah, that Golem-looking thing in Dongon Nopa to represent the killer when you didn't technically know who the killer was. Day two, Saturday. Mekai. Are 
you okay? Date. There we go. Date! Oh. <laughs> Looks like she can talk again. After she had calmed down, I asked her a few questions. I asked her about last night, about the Nile message, about Ota, and about Shoko. I know that after Ota ran off, something must have happened to make Mizuki want to hide. Seems obvious what it was, but it's also best to hear it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> mini, 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 mini. <laughs> Different strings of characters and numbers continue to scroll on the monitor. No, they don't. Y you see what's on the monitor. It's not different strings of characters and numbers. They're freaking lying! <laughs> this monitor is turned off. No, it isn't! They're freaking lying! You can see the sink machine through the window. What? <laughs> A CRT monitor. The lifter. Date, look. It's a brawn tube. We understand that, that it's a brown tube, yes. Is there somewhere you want to go with that? Brown tube. God! Okay. Is that it? Is that all it was? No, it... Why? <sighs> Didn't that just mess up their own gag? This isn't the first time this dub has done that. Hmm, yeah, I guess you're right. Sometimes they're clearly recorded in a vacuum without the context of the previous line. Oh god, I hope the voice actors can breathe. I'll stop. Braun. Ferdinand Braun. Inventor of the cathode ray tube. I can't get my head around that one. CRT monitor. Some people are obsessed with these. A long table. I want to hit Date over the head with that. Oi! Well, she is big on, like, wrestling and, like, combat. What? Where did that come from? A locker. What's inside this? Sometimes a cleaning lady is hiding inside. What? <laughs> That's disturbing. There's no one who has been stuffed into the lockers. <laughs> Pewter is standing with his hands in his pocket. I know I should be talking to Mizuki, but as I've already established, I have to do everything but that first. This is so boring, Date. You said you wanted to ask me some questions, and so all you're doing is looking at lockers and tables. Mizuki, how long have you lived with me? This is why I want to hit you over the head with the table. Fair enough. So how does Iba appear in Somnia? Uh, like that? Iba is linked to your brain with an artificial nerve. To put it more simply, Iba is a part of your brain. During sinking, your consciousness is sent into the subject's Somnium. Part of Iba's self is also synced. But only a part. Not all of Iba's functions are transferred into Somnium. Ah, no zoom or x-ray scan. So that's why Somnium Iba is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me dumb. Why not? Because she'll self-destruct in his eye socket. Okay. So, why does Iba look like a twerking fluorescent shrimp girl? Hey, Pewter. When we were in Somnium earlier, Iba was in human form. Someone's got to bring up the fact that she has a hairstyle similar to the boss. Well, it would make sense that he might mold her image off of someone he's familiar with. Sure, I just feel like they ought to actually, you know, address that. She's never looked like that before. That was Iba's idea. Uh-huh. What? I thought you would be more pleased. I designed it to your taste. Oh god, Date's a lollicon too. What do you mean, two? I didn't mean anything. What part of that was my taste? The boss's hairstyle. I know everything inside your mind. You don't have to hide it. <laughs> Pewter, I was broken. She's talking crazy. <laughs> I am not broken. That's all normal. Perhaps Iba admires the human form. It's not that. It was just a little something. Uh-huh. I consider Kaname Date to be my host. I owe him gratitude. So I'm going to twerk skeletons for him? 
Well, he does like pelvises, and she knows his innermost thoughts. <laughs> I simply thought that appearance would make him happy. Why would that make me happy? Okay, we're done with that line of discussion. So about Somnium. In a normal dream, the person experiencing the dream cannot remove themselves from it. Dreams are first-person experiences. Well, you actually can. Not all the time. I mean, I know that it's a skill that can be trained up, but even in my case, like I mentioned before, I've had dreams that were so dumb, I was like, this is so obviously a dream, and it's so dumb, I just don't even care anymore. And then you kind of disengage, and that then you kind of have a little more control over it, or mm -hmm. you can just choose to end it. Right. Okay, that happens in my case anyway. But Not I, mine. I can't, I don't remember any time right. that's ever happened to me. However, the circumstances are slightly different during a sink. The sinker dives into the subject's mind and experiences their subconscious thoughts. But this dream is experienced as an observer, as though you were watching a play. I was going to say that that up there on, in the brain looks sort of like the Acropolis. The subject is the author, director, and actor. The sinker is merely the audience. So tell me your opinions on who you think this upset is. Exactly. Pewter, who do you think the culprit is? Well, let's see. Perhaps it was you, Special Agent Dotty. I don't like how you're so close to the truth. I mean, click, click, bam! What? <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know, things like that you should take seriously. So about that figure I saw. Oh, that. I strongly doubt that Date killed her, but the reason that I don't just dismiss Billy's mutant eye killer <laughs> theory out of hand is because I, 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 I give him your mom, if you understand what I'm saying. Because I sure don't. I saw it too. Who or what do you think it was? Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> mm, most likely someone Mizuki saw in person projected into her subconscious. Dreams can only be constructed from images and experiences the subject was present for. Mizuki Samium couldn't have contained that figure if she didn't see it in person. That clearly can't be the case. What do you mean? I have frequently dreamed of things that I've never seen, and people I've never known, making up people out of nothing. Frequently it is like this. There's no significance to it. I I'm not trying to claim there is. It's just a house that I've never been in. Or a person yeah. that I've never known. Yeah, I've done that kind of stuff, too. I thought you said you didn't remember your dreams. I don't often remember my dreams, but I've told you about Dream College, for instance. The one recurring dream I do have. Anyway, everything that he seems to be telling us about dreams is a bunch of hooey. Look, man, you just gotta understand that he's setting forth the rules of this game so we think the right way. Of course, not everything we see in our dreams looks exactly the same as it did in the real world. You saw some strange things in Somnium earlier, didn't you, Dante? That event you experienced is obviously not as it happened in reality. Dreams are a collage of many memories intertwining and blending with each other. Some people think. Your skills as a sinker allow you to untangle those dreams and solve mysteries no one else can. So I, I can't help but notice that Dante seems to rely on Aiba for his sinking. What about the other sinkers? Oh yeah, you're right. Maybe there's someone who has a cybernetic arm, and then there's someone who has a cybernetic leg, and then there's someone who has a cybernetic nose, and then there's you because of the hair thing. <laughs> so there's like the hair parasite. And hey, that's all of them. <laughs> ah, you stumbled across hair, Bob. Speaking of hair. Yeah, see, look at that hair. That is clearly Iba's hair. Boss is staring at Mizuki. Any thoughts on who the suspect was? Is? Will be? How would I know? <laughs> we still don't have enough information. What? Do you want me to speculate like BSG? Continue your investigation, Special Agent. In a minute, in a minute, I still gotta talk to you. Do you have any questions? Right, there was something. Hey, Mizuki. When we found you, you were holding the ice pick, right? 
Can you tell us why? When I got there, the ice pick was... It was... Yeah. It was stuck in my mom's eye. If she doesn't actually say it, she hasn't accepted it. Saying it brings it out in the consciousness and... To, to the front. Makes it true. You can't pretend that it doesn't happen if, if you say it out loud. I couldn't think straight. I... The only thing I could think was... I had to get it out. Makes sense. So, you panicked and pulled it out. You didn't do anything wrong. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And you held on to it when you hid in the column. Yeah. Do you have any further questions since I'm on the topic? Okay, just one more question. This is very important. When you pulled out the ice pick, was Shoko's eye still there? I'm pretty sure it wasn't. The eye socket was empty. Yeah. God, poor thing. Thank you, Mizuki. That was very helpful. Just imagine having to actually go on with that line of questioning. Well, Boss didn't seem eager to ask it. Boss shines in moments like this. She doesn't hesitate to ask anything. Now we know that Mizuki did not remove the victim's eye. When we got to the scene, it was definitely missing. And it has not yet been recovered. We can therefore conclude it has been removed from the scene. About what I saw in Somnium. No need to report specifics. We saw it all from here in the control room. Oh, hey, that's convenient. That's no fair! What the sinker sees in Somnium is projected here, remember? I can't believe you ordered her to punch the horse. <laughs> We've got it all recorded. Oh, good. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? I invented it. Yeah, it kind of is! <laughs> Anyway, we know about the figure you saw. I wonder who that could be. So let's talk about Mizuki's muteness. Yeah, I'm glad she's talking again. You healed the wounds in her heart by sinking with her. Thank God. At least to some degree. Well, you meaning you and Aiba. I could take some of the credit. Aiba didn't do anything! The boss has extraordinary perception. Shut up. I deserve much of the credit for helping Mizuki recover her voice. Uh-huh. No, you don't. All you did was follow my instructions. Yeah, take that. Date, Mizuki needs you. Y you're just some horse-punching eye. Some twerking horse-punching <laughs> eye shrimp. <laughs> twerking horse-punching eye shrimps don't get credit. Those are the rules. It's in the contract. You know, shrimps actually are capable of seeing multiple wavelengths of light. Just like infrared and ultraviolet, that kind of stuff. I just, since we're calling her a shrimp girl, because she's a shrimp girl, you know. Protect her. Don't gotta tell me. Hey, can I pop this cherry? Excuse me, come okay. on! Whoa. I'll just show myself out. Date, you sounded quite proud of that pun. <laughs> You're the only one that understands me, Aiba. Perhaps you'd like to repeat it? Nah, it's fine. I'll take a seat. This is why I like to hit you over the head with tables. <laughs> no thanks. It's not the same as the first time. Oh! <laughs> that was some innuendo. That was... <laughs> I don't know whether to call that brilliant or unfortunate or what. <laughs> I can't believe that it's in front of Mizuki. Mizuki is sitting in the chair. I don't know where this lying is coming from. Maybe she's telling lies in the chair. Are you hungry? I did promise you some food. I'm fine now. But I didn't forget your promise. <laughs> A promise? Unagi. Mm, unagi. You said you'd take me. I did. Seriously, Unagi Eel, it's so good. It's one of the best tasting foods I've ever eaten. Hmm. So you heard that, huh? <laughs> Aphonia only affects speech. Her hearing should still be intact. Yeah, she, she was really upset, sure, and literally no one blames her for that. But that doesn't mean that she wasn't aware of what she was doing or, or or of her actions. She probably just didn't have much will to do anything. Sure, Mizuki. 
when we're all done here. You know, the way this game very slowly introduces everything is exactly my taste. I really like the pacing of this game. And every character so far, like, you slowly get to know them in a way where, that makes you laugh and smile a lot. Feels kind of natural. Yeah, I really like that. I really appreciate it a lot. So how are you doing? I told you I'm fine. Well, you say that, but... So annoying. I annoyed you already, huh? The pressure is annoying. <laughs> Come on! Cut him some slack, or he'll kick you out of his home! <laughs> what pressure? Force over area measured in Pascal's dummy. I know what pressure is! <laughs> Math joke! I see she is back to her usual self. Her attitude is within normal parameters. I'll Pascal you! I think I liked her better when she was silent. Man, all the women in my life just crap all over me. So who sent you the Nile message? I... I can't tell you. Oh, come on. It's your father, wasn't it? it has to be. Why not? Because I don't want to. Yeah, that it's got to be her father. Because she doesn't want to get him in trouble, even though he's surely not the killer. That would just be too obvious. I mean, because he has to be the first suspect. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, they questioned him, and then he vanished. That's not a reason. You were at the scene of the crime because of that Nile message. Whoever sent it to you is a prime suspect. And tried to pin it on you. Well, I don't think that happened. For one, she yeah, I was... guess there's no way they could have predicted she'd do what she did. And she was easily and instantly cleared. So... Good point, good point. I don't think she is going to answer. When she is in a mood... It's impossible to get her to talk. Really specifically, the only reason that someone would refuse to say who it was is because they don't want to get them in trouble, and that suggests a limited range of people. That's the kind of girl she is. <sighs> Sometimes I think you know her better than I do. How long do you think I've been observing her? It's been four years now. Correct. I know things that even you do not know. Like? <laughs> now is not the time for this, Dante! Actually, never mind. Some things I'm better off not knowing. By the way, we already looked into Mizuki's cell phone. Deleted the, uh, info, right? Unfortunately, the yep. contents were wiped. I'm tracing the sender of the Nile message through other means, but it's taking me some time. Carrier pigeon. Very slow. So about that figure I saw in your dream. Say, Mizuki, who was that figure I saw? What? Insomnia, in your dream. I saw a silhouette. So I wonder if she just didn't notice. Like, her brain registered the data, and so there is some level of it from, like, peripheral vision in her brain, but other than that, she never consciously she noticed. noticed. someone was there, but was too distracted by what was going on for it to fully, like you said, register? Yeah, and, she, and that person was not close enough to her in any way, and she was so distraught, mm -hmm. so... Bleh. Date, Mizuki would not understand the question. Now, if it was her father... But if it was her father who sent her the Nile message, wouldn't that mean that this is her father? That would make sense. Because if operating under the assumption that her father is not the killer, mm -hmm. which is an assumption, I'm yes. aware of this, why would he say, daughter, I have found... The corpse of your mother. Like, I am led to believe that I have found the corpse of your mother. You should go look. And not show up himself. She right. does not experience somnium as you do. Oh, okay. Thanks for the explanation. You are witnessing a dream inside her brain. Well, I'm going to ask her about it anyway. Never mind. Did you see anyone at the merry-go-round the night you found Shoko? I did. I saw someone... in the corner, past the merry-go-round. Who did you see? I don't know. But that would mean that if her father did send the message, which is just a guess, but if her father sent the message, then he wouldn't have showed up? Yeah, but I doubt she would have just gone if any old random schmo was like, Hey kid, come to the merry-go-round in this abandoned amusement park. It was dark and raining. 
they looked scary, so I hid inside the merry-go-round. They had a red raincoat, and were carrying a fire axe. And, oh, that's a different game. I'm sorry. The door was open a little bit, so I snuck in. The door was open a little bit. Did she lock the door from the inside? That's what they said at the time, yeah. I mean, that seems weird, but... Um, also, the door being open a little bit... Well, maybe that's not weird at all. This place has been abandoned for eight years. Yeah. And we already know there are people who have run around messing with things there, so... Anyway, I get the story. Mizuki witnessed a suspicious person at the scene. But she didn't get a good look at them. So now what we need to do is try and identify the suspicious person? That's really the only thing we have left. We were able to identify Ota before using security cameras. So this, unless this person dodged them all or something. Which is quite feasible, but... Maybe there's something at the scene we missed. Date, could you return to the scene of the crime? I don't think I've ever been to the scene of the crime so many times as in this game. There might be more to Bloom Park than we first thought. Actually, before we go, something occurred to me. Huh? What's sock puppeting? So sock puppeting is where you create a problem so you can solve the problem to make yourself look like you are someone who solves problems for and sticks up for someone else. Uh-huh. Even though the very problem that you are correcting to attempt to earn that affection or something, or credibility or something, comes from you in the first place. It's exceedingly dishonest. If the killer is Date's evil eyeball... What the... Wouldn't that kind of make sense to a degree if Date was the source of the problem? Although not directly, because he's clearly a decent human being. Like, evil Date. Now, I feel like I might be reaching, but come on. Well, <laughs> why don't we wait for evidence that indicates something strange? Okay, okay. Before continuing to assume that there is a phantom eyeball walking about. <laughs> Fair enough. When I returned to the scene, I brought Mizuki with me because apparently this is my life now. Bringing underage children to crime scenes. I saw a suspicious figure in Somnium, but I couldn't be sure of its exact location. I bet it's going to be the footprints. Not only did Kagami mention the footprints that he was looking for earlier, but the footprints of the figure were glowing. Right, right, right. So I bet that's what we're going to I find. I imagine you are right. I brought Mizuki along to help pin it down. Yeah, it's a good idea, because there may be things that she hasn't volunteered just because... There's a lot of things in her mind right now. She's got to process it all. And if she can actually handle coming here like this, it'd be really good. Being here could help jog her memory. Right, exactly. Somewhere around here, right? Yep. In Tokyo, even the nighttime is bright. Even in the patches of sky, I couldn't see the stars. Oh, a UFO! Oh, no, wait. That's a plane. My hamburger! Oh, a UFO! Uh, no, wait. That's a drone. It wasn't real beef! <laughs> oh, UFO! No, that's oh, no, Superman! Just... <laughs> oh, wait. Just a grandma! <laughs> What's it gonna be? Go on! <laughs> that grandma is booking it through the sky! The grandma is booking it through the night sky! Mini, 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 mini. I must be really, really tired. There are no stars tonight. Only grandmas? Only grandmas. Mizuki is looking behind the bush. Are you cold? What do you care? What the heck? Uh, because I genuinely care about your well being? You never cared about me ever. Okay, okay. I feel like there's some projected going on here. And I liked it that way. I don't want you getting close to me. Excuse me? I mean, okay, look, if she has any time where it's okay for her to be a brat, it's now. Yeah, yeah. But only for like maybe another week or so. And then it's like, okay, you need to calm down. You can't be like this anymore. You think I like you now because I hugged you after the sink? If lashing out at someone who's not going to take it the wrong way is going to help her, then that's 
That's what she needs to do. Yeah. Did you think, aw, how sweet she likes me? Either that or this is always how she is. Ugh. Don't get it twisted. I only hugged you because you were standing right in front of me. Uh, uh-huh. Could have been anything. Could have been a pole or cactus. In fact, I wish it were a cactus. So stop worrying about me, okay? So she says. <laughs> do you remember anything? Yeah, I do. What do you remember? I went to this amusement park when I was little. Mm-hmm, mm hmm I was four. That wow! I remember it so clearly. She looked like she was eight or something. Well, Ota's 24. If anything, that is one trope that this game pile drives into the concrete. All right, now listen. <laughs> she said when I was four. I said I thought she was eight. Her actual age is 12. And then, <gasps> and then you said that Ota is 24. <laughs> <laughs> Math joke! <laughs> Completely unintentional. They're all multiples of four, and almost they're all doubles. This is where I saw my mom and dad smile. Yeah, exactly as we said. I had so many happy memories here. The only happy memories I really have are from here. Memories of my family are so bright and colorful. But now, this is where mom... Yeah, it ruined the only happy memories that she had, because now she's always going to remember it as... as... the place where her mother died. What's wrong? Nothing. Just wondering where this goes. Yeah, we'll look at it in a minute. Mizuki is looking into the bush. Or maybe behind it? Okay, well, for all our options have been exhausted. You could say they're bushed. Iba, what's past here? That was tryhardy. Jeez. <laughs> the thing is, is, is you seem so unskilled compared to Date. Oi! This leads to the subway. A subway? It has, of course, closed down. It is no longer in service. This is due to the explosion at the chemical plant that occurred years ago. Everyone remember, explosion at a chemical plant that is in no way related to anything going on, probably. The surrounding district of Kawasaki was contaminated and declared off limits. Bloom Park closed for the same reason. As did all commerce and industry in Kawasaki. This means the railroads and public transportation to and from this area were shut down as well. Yeah, well, he could have just used the tunnel. The subway. Iba, does the entire track run underground? No. The track leading northward from Bloom Park eventually rises to ground level. There you have it. Okay. At a railroad crossing? Correct. Then the tracks must cross a surface street at some point. Correct. A railroad crossing? Railroad crossing? Iba, do me a favor. Can you see if any cars were driving on that surface street last night? Searching. On the surface street, we'd be able to use the cameras to check. Yeah. Hey, you've been quiet for a long time. Are you okay? I am talking to the eyeball in my head. I'm just thinking. You are so weird. I've got something. I picked up a single vehicle traversing that street last night. Well, well, well. I bet I know who it belongs to also. A black SUV. I ran the plate through the vehicle registration database to find the owner. Who was it? Shoko Nadami's ex-husband and Mizuki's father. Okay, so we've just been completely right about everything. Uh-huh, yeah. Does that bode well for your evil eyeball that possesses people theory? Well, that depends on if he's currently possessed by the evil eyeball. See, here's the thing. Oh my god. No, 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 no. You brought it up! If the eyeball has possessed him now, then I bet the next murder victim we find is going to be him with the missing eye. And then the next murder victim we find is going to be the person who killed him, and so on and so forth. I mean, I don't think there's nothing to what you're saying, but... <laughs> Renju Okiura. Can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get this straight. 
You think that Daddy drove his car on the tracks through the tunnel, stopped at the closed down station, and carried Mom's body to the park? I can't prove it was Renju. There's a chance someone else was driving the car. Could have had his car stolen, for instance. We know the body was moved. Yes. Uh, doesn't mean it was him, but... He's definitely involved somehow. So if he was the one that sent that Nile message, you should probably admit that, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. But, in any case, I know that the suspect must have used the subway tracks. And doesn't, doesn't Mizuki's response seem to kind of point towards that, like she's looking for a way to try and clear him. Yeah. That explains why there were no cars parked near the scene. Using that subway station, you could take the body right to the merry-go-round without being caught on camera. Daddy didn't do it. I am not so certain. I'm willing to believe that just because it, you know, makes for a really interesting, complicated plot. <laughs> Either way, I have to talk to Renju. But there is this, hundred uh, percent. Talking to him will fix it. Should fix the problem. If he's innocent, he should be able to prove it. And you can help me find him. What would drive Renju Okiura to kill someone he cares so much about? <laughs> Join us in the next episode when we carpool our resources to find the culprit. I appreciate that you're trying, but you're gonna have to stop chasing after Date so recklessly and blindly. You're going to have to actually approach him with the intention to beat him, not just run behind him <laughs> screaming, Daddy, Daddy, all the way. Shut up. 